Namaste. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome. This is take two. Some of you may be joining that were on earlier and I had to completely reset my internet. So I want to apologize to those of you that were cut off earlier and know that I'm going to repeat everything that I said, um, or at least try to remember what I said. I will reflect on some of the questions that came in in the earlier live stream. And we'll just we'll just start at the beginning. So hi, everybody. I'm Sadhana and uh, welcome. This uh, series that I'm talking about today is going to start in January on Tuesday mornings, uh, Vancouver time, 10 a.m. on my channel. And this is going to be a real kind of take your time working with Lenormand kind of series. I did teach some years back a, uh, I called it, uh, it was it was at my home. And so I taught Lenormand here at my kitchen table. And um, I've done that actually a few times. It's really, I love working with Lenormand. It's a very different system. And today I'm going to share with you what, a little bit of an introduction to Lenormand, if you don't know what Lenormand is. And we're going to look at a whole bunch of different Lenormand decks. So if you're interested in hopping into the series, you will kind of know what to get your hands on. And the good thing is that Lenormand decks are generally quite inexpensive. So it's a really easy form of divination to, to start to connect with. So welcome. Um, who is here? I saw that earlier. We had a message from Vanessa, Cards, Journals, and all that jazz. So I want to say welcome. Thank you. I really appreciate you signing on as a member um, and everyone else that's been um, supporting the channel in that way. And I've been able to offer and want to keep offering more um, educational content, if you will, um, and I'm, I'm able to do that thanks to your membership. So really appreciate it. Hello to Liddy Ann. And Ann, all the way over in Norway. It must be almost bedtime for you or past bedtime. And Julia. Okay, so we'll start to greet, um, say hi to people as they come in. I know Amber and Candy are probably still live. But I couldn't put this off for another another hour. Julia is not familiar with Lenormand at all. And Lydianne asks, what is the difference between Kipper and Lenormand? I do not know the answer. So I'm just going to say I don't know. I will be putting in the Lenormand videos some links to Kelly Fitzgerald's channel, The Truth in Story. And Kelly teaches Lenormand and Kipper. And so she would be a good resource to, to, to learn about that comparison, but I am not. I have I do have no Kipper cards in my collection, and I have I've never never worked with them. Hi there, Gerald. Lovely to, to have you here. So one one of the books that I will be referring to again and again when we start this series is Caitlin Matthews' book. And I have a bunch of Lenormand references. They're all really big, big books. This is the one that I really like. I find it super useful. And to go back again and again to study Lenormand, I, I get something new out of this book each time that I go back. Hello, Bordida. Welcome. Um, it's Friday, so you can stay up. Okay, cool. I'm talking to Anne there, yeah, because I know she's in Norway. And Tammy Anne, hello, namaste. So earlier, Joel was on, and Joel wanted to know, complete beginner, wanted to know what Lenormand was. And I just wanted to read you one thing uh, from Caitlin Matthews' book. And this is quite... Um, the history of tarot, the history of Lenormand is very complicated and confusing. But in a nutshell, Lenormand is a different form of divination. The cards tend to be smaller than tarot cards. There are 36 cards in a Lenormand deck. And the style of reading tends to be more matter of fact, less esoteric. So there's less need I'm going to say, if you can say that for intuition, um, and it's really quite easy to read if you like to 
um, what am, you know, it's like putting a story together is what it is. But I, I just wanted to read you a little bit from Caitlin's book. And if you have this book, this is on page three, and the printing that I have, what copyright do I have? 2014, copyright 2014. Although this 36, 36 card oracle is named after the French celebrity diviner Marie Anne Lenormand, these cards actually originated in Germany and were not of her invention. Until 2013, it was thought that the young businessman Johann Kaspar Hettel was the inventor. I'm sorry for the pronunciation. For he created the game of hope that was published in 1800. His 36 cards were used as a board game with two dice where the cards were laid in a square around which the competitors raced to the winning post, like snakes and ladders. Um, so there is a lot of discussion about how this all originated, but there's more information about the game of hope in this, um, in this book. And we'll talk a little bit about the history in the course, but my approach will be each week we're going to look at card pairings, reading, combinations of cards, and I don't want to spend a lot of time one by one explaining card meetings because you can look those up in any book. That's very easy to do. What I want to do is start to get into working with three card and nine card spreads almost right away and different spreads that I use and also doing, um, well, there's so many fun things that we can do. Well, also, which I find there's, there's two other layers that I think are really, really important. And that is one is working with the layers of the grand tableau, which is where you have all 36, all 36 cards on the table. Because by learning what the houses represent, um, it brings in just this whole other layer and learning playing card associations. So I hope Today, as we go through some of these decks, some of these ideas will um, filter through my conversation. And by all means, go ahead and ask questions, and I'll try to answer those as well, too. If any of the decks I'm showing you today are out of print, um, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to just put a whole bunch of decks on the table right now. And if there's any that you do want to see, please let me know, because I'm not going to have time in this hour to show you every um, Lenorma deck in my collection. So who else is here? Helen is here. Hello, namaste. And Liz, good evening to Liz. Uh, Tamian is a complete beginner. Susanna, yes, we are back and hopefully the internet will be, will work this time. Okay. Alrighty. Excellent. So I'm just going to show you what decks I have in my collection. And then, then we're gonna. Then I'm just gonna open them up and talk about a few of them. All right. So, and as far as that, I'll show you the, all the mass market ones I have first. So this is not mass market. Okay. This one is known. So this one's known as the Bluebird. These are all available. They're tiny and cheap, inexpensive decks. Um, Pixies Lenormand, which comes in a U.S. Games tin. The Fairy Tale Lenormand also comes in a little tin. Um, these are not. And then let's see, what else do I have? I believe Dreaming, Dreaming Way is mass market. Um, the Celtic Lenormand is mass market. Art Nouveau is mass market. Um, Rana George, and she has an excellent large guidebook that goes with hers as well too. This one is mass market. And then maybe Lenormand is mass market. Okay, and that's, that's what I have for mass market decks. And then for 
self-published Lenormand. This one. So this is the Aura Lenormand. And we definitely will look at that one today. This one, I this one is out of, out of print. That is by um, Al Schwartz, and I have the Anna K. Lenormand, which is a great little deck, as well as Anna Torian's Lenormand. And no surprise that I have this one, which is by Celia Melsville, the creator of. Uh, the creator of, of a lily white tarot. And this little tiny one, you can see how tiny it is, is the 19, is the 1889 mini version. I only have the tiniest version of that one. Okay, so these are all the Lenormand decks in my collection. Oh no, I have one more. I have one more here, which I haven't used and I will open and share with you today. This one I purchased... Kickstarter, this is the Magpie Lenormand. So we'll have a look at this fancy box later as well too. Okay, so I think, I think that's it for what I have in my collection. Okay. Christy, I'm glad you're back as well too. Okay, Evangelina, hello. Dee, did I say hi to you? Welcome, welcome. Okay, so let's put the self-published ones away and have a look at some of the mass market decks. So what I am looking for in a Lenormand deck are cards that are easy to read there's not a lot that is going on in the background the thing with reading lenormand is that you want to be able to see the symbol of what you are working with okay and let's just start with um, under the roses because under the roses is a great deck to have if you, some people have a 36 card um, spread sheet or a spread cloth with the 36 cards on it in order that they use for the grand tableau. Um, I do not, but this is a deck that you can use underneath. Um, actually, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. So let's just, I'm just going to stop with what I'm saying here. This deck is very easy to read. Now, in this granted, in this picture, we see a dress, we see a rose, we see a hand, we also see a ring. But it is kind of loud and clear what the, what the focus is here by the title. The clouds look like clouds. The man looks like a man, actually looks like a boy. Um, now, what you're going to find in a lot of Lenormand decks is that, like the tarot, there's a lot of selection, a lot of different decks available. Oh my goodness! Sorry, I'm I'm just pausing. I just see. <laughs> Really, really, there's a Christmas Lenormand. Okay, well, I might have to pick that one up as well, too. I don't really, really need um, one. Um, I will show you the Dreaming Way, and we'll get to that in a second. So when you go through the 36 cards, it's important that you look at the card and you know, okay, that is the fish, that is the house, that is the man, that is the sun. Do you confuse this with the star or is it clear that that is the sun? Another thing in Lenormand decks is that if you do not want um, a heterosexual white man and lady card, there are not a lot of Lenormand decks that are good with diversity. They are culturally North American and Euro, I'm going to say Eurocentric. So this may be a problem with, with some decks. The lilies look like lilies. 
<clears throat> now, in this deck, the book is called The Journal. And this is another issue that we're going to have to deal with in the class. Obviously, we see the number here is 26. And so 26 is the book or the journal. Um, just a minute here. Yes, that is the journal. Okay. But there's other issues in choosing a perfect deck. And I'm going to show you some that I think do a better job than others. The reason that I like this deck, and I'm just going to show you right now. I know that uh, Christy was saying how much she likes the 1889. This is not a mass market deck. It's available on Etsy. <clears throat> and I will put the links below. These are these are the backs, aren't they pretty? I think it's also available in a larger size. But this deck, you can put the mini cards on top. If you are, so for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, when you're reading Lenormand, there, there is a layer that is referred to as houses. And when you place all 36 card, cards on the table, the arrangement of the 36 cards, that underlying layer has a fixed set order. And if you haven't memorized that and you have two decks, you can place the deck that is on the bottom in the order of the cards and then shuffle a second deck and then place that on top so you know which house you are working with. And for example, we would be reading the ring in the house of the sun, which has a slightly different energy than if the ring is sitting in the house of the fish or if the ring was sitting in the house of the of the gentleman. And so this deck in particular is um, is a is a good size if you have a mini Lenormand deck to work with two decks at the same time on on the table. But what I was saying is a lot of people, um, if you can find a sheet or you can use um, uh post-its or anything like that when we get to that stage it's um there's lots of ways we can we can we can do that rather than purchase an expensive reading sheet okay so one of the things that i i don't like in this deck is that the snake is a colored woman and the i just don't like the way that women are portrayed in this deck at all It's, uh, it's, it's, to me, it's very sexist. It's very uh, misogynist. You know, I, I don't like the way that it's portrayed. But what I do like is the size and the way that it can be used as an underlying deck for, um, for a grand tableau reading. Okay, so I'm going to go through the comments and your questions one by one, and then I will share the decks. So I'm going to comment now. This is a mass market deck that Tammy Ann is asking about. This is by the creator of um, the Dreaming Way Tarot, which many of you have. I left the extra card in there. I'm going to put that over there. Okay. Now, this is a cute little deck, and I have a side by side video of Celia Mills Bill's Tannis Lenormand, this one. And the one we're looking at right now, which is the Dreaming Way Lenormand. Because they have a very, they have a very similar look to them. 
Okay. This deck switches up the, the feeling, the basic feeling of the cards. So the rider rides the horse backwards. And for me, that has a different energy. The rider, the essential meaning of the rider is one of a messenger. And with the rider riding the horse backwards, there's, there's some confusion there about the delivery of the message or how the message will be delivered. So there's something about that card that, that bothers me. The garden card that is here is, um, let's put that one down as well too. The sense of the garden, let me get you a traditional deck so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Let me find a garden card. Um, okay, so here's a traditional garden card. We're going to look at different garden cards. Some of them actually have more of a more a more of a park feel to them. And the garden is representative of a, a of community. It's a place where we gather. And once you get familiar with the meanings of the individual cards, to have cards that pictorially represent what the cards mean, it is a little bit easier to read the cards. Here we have, to me, what looks more like a, um, a pot plant, not a garden, you know, so I'm, what I'm saying is, Tamian, I'm not sure that this is a great deck for beginners. It would be good to have more of a, of a I mean, the, the watercolors are beautiful. I love watercolors too. And it's funny because we have, some of the symbols are really simple and appear very modern and then others not so much. Like the anchor is a tattoo, the cross is a pendant. This one in particular, I don't really like. The fish underneath the umbrella, it, to me, it doesn't have that sense. It, it, this feels more like a cloud card to me than a fish card. I mean, the sun is beautiful. The lilies are great and simple. The letter's a letter, the book's a book. This is a funny card for the mice because it doesn't really represent the meaning of the mice. It looks like this is a card about movement or stealing, perhaps stealing. And that's not necessarily what, what that card means. Um, this is the, the pathways card. I mean, this is a, it's a, it's a pretty card. Here we have uh, the dog card, which has a child in it. So to me, that could be confusing. If we look at a, I want to go to a deck where things might be a little easier to read. So this is the Celtic Lenormand by Chloe, Mc Chloe McCracken. Here we have the fish underneath uh, underneath a waterfall. So we obviously have fish. Um, the man is a man, not a boy. I mean, not every card in this deck is perfect. This is the Pathways card in this deck, the Crossroads deck. So we have a standing stone separating two paths as opposed to the maze that we just that we just looked at. Um, let me see if I can find the garden card in this deck. Garden is 20. And I know it has a different name. The names are not on, on the cards in this deck. Now this is a Celtic Lenormand, so it has a theme of a, a Celtic flavor to it. And this looks more like a picnic, but the thing I do like about this one is it has an open space. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to just go back and just check in with your questions. Okay. Um, and you enjoyed adding to your collection, Gerald? Is that what you mean? I'm sure that's what you mean, meant. And yes, Kelly has also created her own Lenormand, which is called Color Lenormand. Story in color or truth in color. Yes, I know she has her own deck. I do not, I do not have it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, Aquarius Owl. Welcome. It's not completely necessary. So another issue with buying a Lenormand cloth is that are your cards going to fit on the cloth? This is the Celtic Lenormand. This is the Dreaming Way Lenormand, which is a little bit wider and not as just a little, sorry, a little bit wider and not as long. So if you are purchasing a, um, if you are purchasing a reading cloth, make sure that you get the measurement for the space of the cards on the reading cloth. That's really important because it would be a shame to, to make that investment and then your cards don't fit on the cloth. Now, even in this deck, which I like very much, the lily does not to me look much like a lily. The coffin is a tomb, which it's fairly easy to interpret. The tree is absolutely gorgeous. And in this deck, we have several alternate cards. Okay, so the the ring, the ring is uh, hand fasting, which makes sense for the, the theme of the card. And if you if you go through a deck and you can't figure out what is being represented, it's not a great deck for a beginner. And for example, this card is a little bit problematic. Is this the moon? Is this the ship? Or is this the star? And if you are a newbie, you won't know what this is because it's too hard to read. And so that is one of the reasons for either choosing a deck that has the key, the keywords on it, or that has artwork that is crystal, crystal clear, and there's absolutely no confusion. So this is the ship card here. The reason that I'm taking time to show you some of these decks, because I'm sure many of you have many of these decks, is that when we're when we're doing a class, it's important that you have access to traditional pictures. The Lenormand is generally not read intuitively. Mice means mice, ship means ship. And we don't tend to stray too far from that. The only time that I that I do is if I'm doing a three voices reading and I'm using tarot and oracle and Lenormand, there might be a little bit more of a, of a weaving in a reading. But if I'm reading straight up Lenormand, not so much. Okay. All right, let's go back to... Um, 
Helen, it's, I have a feeling they do. And I might have put them into another, another box. So often in, in a deck, when you purchase a deck, you will have a choice for people of color and white people. Sometimes there's even a choice for older people and younger people. Um, yes, and I apologize for that. So in the Celtic Lenormand, I know that. So in this little, in this box here, it's, it's really convenient because you know, if you keep the extra cards in and then you shuffle them in by mistake, it's difficult. But I like this little box because the extra cards are underneath here. And so we have an alternate uh, tree card, an alternate rider, and the rider is a, is a girl instead of a boy, which is really nice. And we have, instead of a dog, we could use a cat, which to me has a, a little bit of a different vibe. And we have a different child. And there's an option for the birds so that you can choose birds or owls or chickens, which have to me a slightly different um, flavor. And then we have a sinister snake and a snake that is shedding its skin. Um, and we have a couple of options for the for the women, for the man, the lady and the man. So many decks do have 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 options where you can switch out switch out the cards. And probably in under the roses, I think I think you're right. I think the lady and the gentleman there is an alternate alternate card. Okay, just gonna put that back in here. Okay, so let's go to Dee's comment. You'll often hear people refer to the Piatnik deck. And this is the Piatnik deck. And I believe Piatnik is the publisher. So if you look at the bottom, it says Piatnik. And I'm just gonna open this up. It's very, very inexpensive. And I'll tell you one thing. And I'm going to show you a couple of decks that I absolutely love. So here we have the lady card. It does not say lady on it. It is obvious that this is the ace of spades. Here we have the coffin card. Now, if you are not... Um, if we're, when we're working on playing card associations and you have to count the larger cards so there we have the nine of diamonds and the nine of spades the nine of diamonds and the nine of spades that's fairly easy to count because you have four on each side and you can see that that is a nine um but sometimes with i guess what i'm saying here is my preference is actually to have the playing card association in an inset with the with the uh, number and then the um, club or diamond or heart. For me, that's the easiest way to work with with the Normand. And this is the um, the Pietnik deck. So there you see we have the King of Clubs on the cloud card. We have a boat in that picture. <laughs> There's the sun. And the garden. So the insets in the Piatnik deck are quite large. It's such a good question, Dee. It's such a good question. I think it is just personal preference. In reading Lenormand, eventually you want to be familiar with all of the layers. So the layer of the individual meaning of the card, the nuance of the playing card association, and also um, where it's placed in the spread, 
also has uh, the nuance of another of another of another meaning. So Dee's question is if the artwork doesn't affect the meaning of the card, on one hand, does it make a difference? And then on the other hand, is it okay maybe to read the Normand more intuitively uh, being affected by the artwork? Not really, not really. Lenormand is Lenormand. And it's, uh, like I said, it's, it's not, it's not a, it's not an intuitive thing. So if we are reading with different artwork, I'm going to say more so, a lot more so than tarot, we really need to know what the individ individual cards represent and what the cards mean in combination or in triples. However, However, I'm going to qualify this. Spirit, the divine. This is a form of divination. This is a form, this is an oracle. And so can we completely discount the energy of, of spirit? I don't think so. Uh, originally, these were read, these cards were read with just um, you know, playing cards. And some playing cards were illustrated, others not so much. And so we need to understand the basic meaning. And then, you know, it's up to you, right? You're the, you're the reader. But what we're going to do in this course is to really kind of learn to learn the vocabulary of Le Normand rather than reading them as a, as a divinatory tool. Well, it, Le Normand is still that, an intuitive tool. I know it sounds really, really confusing. Um, and so I guess Dee's comment here is it's confusing. It's, it's difficult enough learning a new system when you have different art or different titles. Okay. It pairs so beautifully, Jonathan, it pairs so beautifully with Druid Craft. And I used it last Tuesday, you saw, with, with Druid Craft. So it's it's beautiful for a two or a three voice reading. Because of course it's the same and same artist. Mm. Okay. So that's also possible too, because I know, Gerald, you can get, did, did you work from a plane, from playing cards? Because you can buy empty tarot cards and you could cut them down or write on them or draw on them. So that's not a bad idea either. Okay. And here Debbie answers um, Dee's question. So yeah, purely aesthetics. All right, so um, perfect timing, Bordila. Let's Bordida, Bordida. Let's go to this one. So this is the Anna K. Lenormand. It is not a mass market deck. You have to order it through Anna K. And it is really, really beautiful. It has borders, and yet the art spills over to the borders. Down on the bottom tiny, tiny little font that doesn't show up. You can see this is the ship. You can see the card number. And then you can also see the playing card association is the 10 of spades. Um, it's there if you need it, but if you have difficulty with your vision, it's a little bit challenge, challenging to read. This is one of my favorite Lenormand cards. The dog looks loyal. The dog looks like a dog. The bear, the artwork of the bear 
So bear in the Norman refers to strength. It also refers to a motherly energy. And you get that in the artwork of this deck. This is the garden in this card. And so you get that sense of space, public space, community, and so forth. This is the tower. When you have a clouds card, it's important that you can see wh where the darkness is and where the light is. So you want to be able to identify both sides of the cards. Okay, now this one might be a little tricky for some people. This is the cross. And you can see that the shadow that is cast by the figure in the distance is creating the cross. The, the burdens that we bear, this card does have some of the energy of maybe uh, a ten of wands, but not always. So I'm going to say this is one of the one of the only ones that might be a little bit difficult to read in some cases. The scythe is beautiful. The star is obviously a star. And here we see the book. So the book is open. And what I would like you to do is look at your Lenormand decks and just have just start to have a conversation with yourself about open book versus closed book. What does that feel like? What does that mean? Do you want the book to be open? Do you want the book to be closed? In some decks, we'll, we'll look at a couple other ones in a bit. The book is closed and we see the spine and the direction of the spine and which way the spine is facing can also bring in a layer of meaning. So it's an important card for directions and so forth. Um, there is the lady card. The fish, I think, is really well done. The fish card represents abundance, right, in the Normand. And so we really do get a sense of abundance with that card. This is brilliant. So the fact that the stork is actually flying and not stationary is another reason why I love this deck. The letter is a letter. And the clover. So in this deck, we see um, the purple clover flower as opposed, as opposed to seeing a four-leaf clover. And I kind of like that, actually. Yeah. So for those of you that are just coming in, this is the Anna K. Lenormand. It's really, really beautiful. This is the tree. The lily is clearly a lily. This is the crossroads card. This one might be a little confusing. That's the heart card. And, you know, I really like this ring card, and I'll tell you why. Because the ring in Lenormand does not always represent, um, like, a wedding ring. The ring represents commitment. It's it's a circle. It's a it's a it's a it's something that binds us together. Something that ties us together. And so, in this deck, we have a uh, what, do, what do you call it? Can't think what you call it. And it's, it's joining two pieces of the sail together on the ship. And so, I like the um, the I like the shift in illustration here. Because if it's always drawn romantically, it's hard to get away from that until you get more familiar with the reading, with reading um, Lenormand. This is a great birds card. I can't say enough about this deck because the birds, you can hear the noise. You can hear the noise of the birds. It's definitely um, European Eurocentric. The coffin in this one is in the ground. And we do not see the whole coffin. We only see one end of the coffin. And the coffin is one of the cards that is sometimes is read with directions. So depending which way the coffin is facing. Anyway, it's a, it's a lovely, lovely deck. Really, really like this one. Okay. Thank you for your comments because your comments are helping me to go through um, the decks. 
Great, Christy. I'm glad that I'm glad that makes sense. Jonathan, so Jonathan and Gerald, you took the class together with Kelly. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay. Mm, not so much. Not so much. The Lenormand cards have their own specific interpretation. And also the, um, the suits. Hello, um, Claire, uh, Claire, Andrew. Hello, Claire. <laughs> Hello, Andrew. The suits also have a different uh, flavor than in um, tarot. So you have to um, get familiar with a different energy of the suits in Lenormand than in tarot. And if we think that the moon is a, um, what the archetype of the moon means in tarot, it means something different in Lenormand. And so I want to say the answer to that question is no. However, the meanings, once you learn them, will be familiar and they definitely will make sense. Okay, so Andrew was asking about the antique anatomy Lenormand. And here, Christy says that it's called Memento, Memento Mori, and it is an oracle and a Lenormand combined. I'm going to show you, um, I've got a couple of those too, and we'll have a look at that. Uh, also, lots of name changes in that deck. I do not have this deck. Okay. Um, Jonathan, I have it, so why don't we have a look? at the magpie. Let's have a look at the magpie. <clears throat> I definitely want to look at Claire de Lune and Aura. Aurum. Okay, so this is the magpie Lenormand which I haven't used yet. I have looked at it. It comes in this large box. So I'm going to put the cards into, um, see if I can back off here a little bit. It comes with this little mini Ouija board. <laughs> this is the Kickstarter edition. Gosh, look at these beautiful stickers. Okay, and this is the book and these are the cards here. Oh, they do come in a box, but I believe they are large cards. They're tarot size cards. Okay. Jonathan, I was quite um, not super happy about some of the choices on the cards. I think that's why I um, why I put it away. Okay, so let's go through here. So this is the dog, right? You can read that as a dog. Dog is dog. There is also a cat card. And so in Lenormand, there is no cat card. So if you are going to do a 36 Lenormand reading, or you're, even if you're going to do nine cards or three cards, I think, you know, these are choices that you would have to make. There are... I believe there's no numbers on these cards either. So these cards have no numbers and no playing card associations. There's other cards like the caterpillar and the chrysalid and the moth. So these are, this is like an oracle, right? So there's there's other, or, other oracular messages that you, um, I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous, but we would need to take these out if we're doing straight up Lenormand. So the Cavalier or the Rider, you see the back end of a moving horse. The Clover is beautiful. The 
This is tricky. This is the ship. I definitely wouldn't recommend this deck for beginners. This is the house. The tree. I mean, the tree is a tree. Now, with the cloud card, this is something I suggest you you take you look at with your Lenormand decks that you do have. This one, the dark clouds are below and the light cards are above. And if you are doing a nine card or a 36 card reading, having the dark and the white above and below works. But if you are only doing a three card or you're doing a six card or you're spreading your cards out across the table, that makes it really difficult to have the dark and the light above and below. This is the snake. Very unusual coffin card. The bouquet. And instead of a scythe, we have the talons of an owl. Yeah. So Jonathan, have you done any readings with this deck yet? Personally, I think this is kind of clever to have the whip. The whip is, is lightning. I like that the birds are nattering. So do you remember I was showing you the bear in the Anna Kay deck? So the bear depicts an energy of strength, but it also has a mothering quality. And so that's one of the reasons why I like that deck so much is that it, the art helps me to remember the, the wider meaning of the card. Okay. Oh, it looks like Andrew bought this card too. I bought this deck as well too. Mm -hmm. I do not have the possum, Lenormand. I haven't. I haven't seen that one. And Andrew is recommending the Lua, Lenormand. Patrice, I'm not sure if I welcomed you when you came in, but I also see that you took Kelly's course and you. You loved that. Kelly's a great, a great teacher. She also has a free Lenormand series on her channel, um, which uh, it's a playlist, which is which is great as well too. Without actually taking taking the class, so there's lots of Lenormand resources out there if you're ready to make the plunge into using a different oracle system. Jonathan, okay, so Gerald and Jonathan also made their own, own deck. You like that one too? Yeah, yeah, I really like that one. Okay, so just scrolling on down. Yes, Christy, the tower has a, has a very, very different meaning. And so here... In the magpie, we have a spider web. And let me just pull out a pull out a car, a pull out a deck for you. So the tower. Let's go to um what should I go to for the tower? The tower, maybe I'll go to the, the 19 the 1889. Let's see, and I'll hold it up nice and close for you. The tower card in Lenormand represents institution. Institution. Um, and along with the mountain, it can also represent a sense of isolation. I'm just looking for a good, a good tower card. Well, here in the, we have a clock tower in this deck. And so when I see the spider web, the first thing that comes to mind is 
connection or something like that. You know, when I see spider webs, I feel like this is a reminder of um, our connection to something, to something greater or, or the, or weaving and the tower doesn't mean that at all. Now I haven't, I mean, I can, I can read the, the book, but it's a, it's a, it's a long, it's a long stretch from the meaning. Whereas the garden card I get, you know, I, I feel the straight up energy, the mountain, this is, this is so cute. So we have an ant here underground. This is the crossroads card. That's, that's really, really lovely. I'm just looking to see if anybody has responded. Uh, Gerald doesn't have the magpie. I'm just looking to see if Andrew, not so Jonathan, replied about reading with this deck yet. <clears throat> Patrice has this deck, and so that's Patrice's feedback on this deck. Yeah, it, it diverges far from the original meaning. I think it's confusing that there's there's magpies on the book card, and I know this is the magpie Lenormand. So it's big. It's big. That's all I have to say. Yeah. I mean, it's beautiful. It's big and beautiful. And maybe I will find a place to work with it, but I, I'm, I, and it's got these lovely, lovely blue, blue gilding on the side. Okay. <laughs> the tower is such a, I really like the tower card and I, the tower card in Lenormand because and the 36 cards in Lenormand have, there's multiple interpretations for each of the cards, but by reading two or three cards together, general, depending, I mean, if you have a question and just like tarot, it's better if you have a question it's easy to figure out which of those variations to go to. So you know if you're talking about isolation or maybe it has to do with, it can represent an executive as well too, an ivory tower or an institution. Um, so it's quite different than the tower in tarot. Really need to let go of the tarot, the tarot meanings. Okay. Okay, here's a link. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, D. <clears throat> Appreciate it. Okay, now, when I was on earlier, I shared this beautiful deck. So this is the Claire de Lune by Anatorian. And this is a deck that doesn't have the playing card associations, which is something that we will be studying in this 36 weeks, but I absolutely love the art in this deck. To me, it's very clear. And these cards are, so here is the Magpie Lenormand, which is tarot size. And This is the 1889. And I'll show you the Anna K, what, what size the Anna K is. That's the Anna K. So the Anna K and the, uh, sorry, so many deck names. The Claire de Lune are the same size. And this is a fairly standard size Lenormand deck or Le Normal. I've also got Jamie Sawyer's deck here. I know some people like those bright colors. The Jamie Sawyer's deck is the one that I had in the um, the Sawyer's Le Normand. I know it is available. It's the one I had in the on the thumbnail 
and I'll show you that one in just in just a minute. Okay. Anna Turian does a great job with her cards. So the coffin, we see all four sides of the coffin. So whether you're at the, the foot or the head of the coffin can have a subtle nuance. The ship is definitely a ship. The anchor is an anchor. The sun kind of looks like some kind of a, a tentacle creature under the ocean, but it does say sun on it. And you have loud and clear the number that is associated with each of the cards. And I think it's really important to know that number until you have memorized those numbers. Um, it's really, really good to have a deck that has the number on the card. And so you for sure could work with a deck that doesn't have playing card associations uh, until you learned the playing card associations. But it's good to get to know them as you as you go along. Here's the tower in Anna's deck. Definitely looks like a tower. Oh, uh, and I showed this one earlier. This is one of my favorite child cards. I love this card. It really captures the energy and the meaning of the child. She's such a beautiful artist. So this one, I believe this one is, is on pre-order. And the dog really kind of depicts there's a hand there so a human hand and you get that sense of of loyalty sorry this one is, is quite dark and the, I'm losing losing light where I am okay what else did I okay so let's look at Jamie's deck so Jamie Sawyer some of you know her from tarot. And I know she also has Lenormand tiles as well as tarot tiles, which are quite expensive, but they're 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 very small and it's um if you had the money, it would be a lovely thing to have. The lady is a deer. There are the numbers and the names of the cards are clear on the cards. The drawings are relatively simple and straightforward if this is your aesthetic. Now here in this deck, the book is closed. So the book is closed and the spine is on the left side of the card. And so that will have a meaning as opposed to um, an open book kind of energy. And so that is an example of where the art may affect how you read in, in Lenormand. <laughs> the rider is on a motorcycle. So this is more contemporary art. The child is a sippy cup. Scythe is a scythe. I find this anchor card kind of interesting for what, what anchor, anchor means. Anything else? Um, so this card, clouds are left and right. The bear is a cute panda, which I have a little bit of trouble with. Um, it looks very juvenile for the energy of the, for what that means. And in this deck, the stork is in motion, which is great. Clover. Yeah, so this is Jamie Sawyer's Lenormand, the Sawyer Lenormand. Okay. I'm not going to show you these decks. So this one and this one, which we were on earlier, we looked at, are very, very confusing for beginners to start to read with because there's a lot of stuff going on in the border or the background, or there's a lot of similarity in the deck, in the cards. And so I wouldn't recommend either of these decks 
as a beginner, as a beginner Lenormand. Um, this one, now there's something very special in the Orem. Do any of you have the Orem, Len Orem Lenormand? Let me know. <laughs> Wishing you a beautiful journey. This is a this is a high high quality production by Melissa Watherspoon. Okay, so here is the anchor. Clover. I'm gonna just turn up the light for a moment on this side to see if that helps. Oh, work on. No, let's bring it closer. I was all set up earlier with a very different time of day. <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it, Patrice? Okay, so there we have the house. I can hold these up for you. And this is a deck that is super easy to read. Snake, scythe, birds, and here, so in this deck, we see also the ferociousness, the strength of the bear, and also the protectiveness. So we see the, the mother energy as well. So this is a, a really good deck in that regard. This is an optional, um, so lady and man, and there's a person card. There is the man card. Let's just see if I can find the other one. In this deck, the mice are actually eating something, which is an important part of reading the mice. There is the tower. The stork is in flight. The cross is a Celtic cross, which is lovely. I think I took out the lady card. I think there is a lady card and I took it out. And so I have the person card and then the man card. Oh no, it's still, they're all, they're all in here. There is a woman and a, a woman and a man card, and then there's a person card. So I think that is the there's one alternate card in this deck. Yeah. So this is the Orem Lenormand. Now what I was saying is very unique with this deck are these um, these gold threads that weave through, and this is not part of reading Lenormand. But it's almost as if when you do a large spread that these gold threads connect cards together. And this is one of the examples where I kind of allow myself a little bit of leeway because those gold threads paint a line and they bring my attention per perhaps to connecting cards. Now, there's lots of ways to read connecting cards in Lenormand, uh, not usually with a gold thread. Um, but I feel because Lenormand does do path, following different paths and different chess knighting and so forth, different chess moves, um, it, is, it is innate to Lenormand to look at paths and lines and connections in that way. So it's really, really very clever. Um, this is the, is this the Usi, the Usi deck? I don't have it. So if anybody can comment on this one, let me know. Jonathan is back. Okay. Yeah. So others also really like that deck. So if I'm, if I'm using a deck that 
doesn't have playing card associations. This is definitely my favorite. It's my favorite uh, Lenormand deck. Oh gosh, I think it's a close second with Anna's deck with this one because Anna doesn't have playing card associations either. Okay, and then if I'm using a deck that has playing card associations, I'm going to use the Anna K or the Celtic Lenormand. But I wanted to show you the maybe Lenormand because we were talking about decks that are multi multi-purpose. And I know there's quite a few of them out there. And this is one of the multi-purpose decks. And by multi-purpose, I mean, you can use it as an Oracle deck, you can use it as a playing card deck, or, um, or a Lenormand deck. Okay. Um, Jonathan, it's on pre-order right now. It's on pre-order. You can pre-order it for early next year. Okay. Okay. So maybe Lenormand. These are the 36 Lenormand cards, which I have sitting on the top. Underneath here are all the extra cards. Lots and lots of extra cards, 43, 42, 37. They're all numbered. And so what you have in this deck are all of the other playing cards. So you can actually use this deck as a, as a full playing card deck. Like you could play a game of cards with this. So I keep those below, above and below. And let's zoom in a little bit. These are, uh, I'm going to say Lenormand size. I like these because they're they're very clear and easy to read. And I like, I've actually taken this deck on vacation and done readings, played cards with it. It's really quite, quite clever the way that, I like this. It's fun. It's fun to have this, right? So the ring is obviously a ring and the garden, the community space, the letter is a letter. Some of them are a little more difficult because they're, they're really little. That's the coffin card, the crossroads. It's a little bit cardboardy. Um, it looks like a Dr. Seuss mountain. And Dr. Seuss birds. Some of them are a little tricky, a little tricky to read. Um, but there's a lot of white space. Uh, there is no name on the card, which can be a problem for beginners. But this is a really fun, uh, diverse little set that I have, um, that I found kind of useful. So I... Um, I'm glad that I that I'm I'm glad that I purchased purchased this one. Oh, you're welcome, Jonathan. Oh yes, I think that was the one that was mentioned earlier. Yes, somebody asked about it. James's deck. Uh, Yes. And I said, is that an Uzi deck? It was that one. Um, and I believe it has green, it has green colors. Yeah. So have a look at that and see, see how, how you feel about that. Okay. So I want to kind of summarize what's happening with the, with the Tuesday, with the Tuesday class. So this is at 10 o'clock live on Tuesdays. So the chat will be open. We'll go for about, uh, I'm going to say 45 minutes. So it won't be 
too long of a commitment. If you don't watch it live, of course, you can watch the playback. It is available for, um, for members at the citrine level and above. Just let me put up this banner. And I have no particular timeline. So I'm not, I'm not going to say this is going to be 22 weeks. I mean, it would be kind of perfect to make it 36 weeks because 36 weeks, then we could, um, you know, 36 weeks because there's 36 cards in a Lenormand deck. I want to do practice read lots of practice readings. And I think with Lenormand, that's part of the, the challenge is to get really, really quick with making sentences. And I want to take time as well to, to spend at least four to six weeks working on the playing card associations and what we can do with them and how they might flavor a reading too. I, I want to take my time with this. So it'll be going on as long as I as I feel the feel the need. And of course, depending on your response as well, too. Um, do you have any questions? Um, let me know. Let me know. I have a couple other announcements. And that is I have also made a decision. Um, thanks for all your votes. That's right. That's James's deck right there. The green glyphs, Lenormand. James R. Eads. The next deck deep dive that I'm going to be doing is the hush. And I put it on the poll. So I had the poll going in my community page as well as on my Facebook page, Facebook group. And I've added the hush there kind of as a tongue in cheek. I really didn't think anybody would choose it. And the decks that I wanted to work with, the vote was so low. I'm like, oh, okay. I was surprised. So this one's for you and all of you that voted for it because there was um, a lot of votes for it. The second highest votes was the Dreaming Way. It had more votes on YouTube, but the combination of votes between Facebook and YouTube was um was the hush so i'm going to start the deck deep dive of the hush tarot uh it'll be wednesdays again um on youtube live and it'll alternate for uk and north american people between uh it'll be two weeks at 10 a.m and two weeks at 4 p.m and we'll we'll go back back and forth like we like we're doing for the for the marielle right now yeah one more thing okay so i have put on my community tab, you're going to have to scroll down. There's a there's a like a square photo, like an Instagram photo of the Marielle, and it it is asking you for questions. What are your questions about the Marielle? I want to do a live Q and A about the Marielle, and I'm looking for you to ask questions about particular cards or any issues that you have. And I'm hoping to get together various people that are also doing Lenormand groups. I have invited Chris from Elemental Cardamancy. I would love to have Natalie here from Sanskrit, Sanskrit Blue. Um, and I have a couple of other people that are on my invite list and I wanna to put together a live Marielle Q&A and it will be public. You won't have to be a member to do that. So make sure you get your questions into underneath the, um, post on my community page. Okay. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for being here. And let me know if you have any other um, requests for the Lenormand series. And um, if there's any decks that you want me to review or anything like that, I'm, I'm happy to do that behind the scenes. And you can always shoot me an email. It's uh, below info at integrative healing with sadhana.com. Just go, you can go to my, message me through my, um, through my webpage. All right. So thank you. Thanks all for being here. And I will hopefully see some of you on Sunday. I think I'm going to be on Amy's channel. Amy is um, Mystic Rose, Mystic Rose Tarot. And we're going to talk about Yule and our Yule altars and, and so forth. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay, take good care of yourselves. 
and I'll see you soon. Bye.